the day. Uh, Alex Chick saying, let's even forget about Raila Jumwa meeting. The candidate losing the most out of this is Imran uh, in this particular story. Uh, his campaign agenda, not even the issue of discussion uh, and his manifesto right now. Uh, that's Alex underscore Chicks uh, tweeting in. Let's get your tweets as well at KTT4TV or you can SMS us on 21222. We look at uh, the front page of the standard. Next stops 300 schools from stealing examination. Uh, this being the earlier edition of the paper. Deadly scheme just weeks before KCP and KCP CSE examinations. Ministry of Education and Earth plots to defeat strict security checks in 39 counties. Uh, talking about uh, the counties right there. Kuala Mombasa, Kilifi, Kirenyaga, Turkana, uh, West Pokot, Nairobi in there as well. And when you look at the story, they're talking about um, a scheme that was uh, being orchestrated between some uh, Ministry uh, of Education officials, TSC officers, parents and teachers all trying to cheat and rig the system. Let me start with you Mr. Bosiri on this because same story every single year. We put stricter measures, and the more we do that, the more we have uh, other elements trying to subvert the system. I think being truly Kenyan, looking for <laughs> shortcuts, truly Kenyan, mm. shortcuts. And this is something for me, it's so grave. Uh, where is our morality as a country, as a parent, as a person who's been appointed to public office. I think for me, the other story, the other bigger part of the story would have been, it has been discovered, so what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are those people at home? Are they before court? That's what we should be talking about here. Right. There must be consequences for this kind of action. The story is not complete without, this is just a disclosure. So what has happened to that disclosure? Right. Because they will just disclose and say this so and so and this is what we have passed. In Kenya, we always talk about things, but we never see consequent actions. As to what and happens after. These officers must today. Now we are talking about immediate actions. Whoever bust this kind of scheme should today say the following officers are on suspension and we have the following in court. Mm -hmm. for Because this is already cheating. This is cheating. The fact that you've gone, put in schemes to get that cheating thing is, for me, a right. very low point again right. in our country. So you need more action on this? Action, action, action. Not and just saying, we have broken it. And again, like Honorable Lachi says, the fourth estate, we stand accused. We just report. Mm -hmm. Did we go beyond the reporting and say, what really happened? The so what element in this story is not being told out. Right. And this is what we, this is where the news is. It's not telling people it has happened. Right. Do we have what has happened and how was the scheme elaborately laid right. out? Right, right. And uh, things to watch out. Are there other things that we do? So what has happened to the integrity of this examination that is already, has it leaked out? If it has happened, what are the fallback measures? Honorable Sankok, uh, of course, Mr. Busiri talking about the fact that action needs to be taken and that in itself will definitely be a deterrent for future uh, instances of such. But how do we deal with this examination cheating once and for all? Because it seems like the season comes around and you can sense people are trying to plan on how to mm. cheat this particular system, whether primary or at a secondary school level. I'm happy because of two things. One, Narok. Uh, only have one <laughs> secondary school, none, no primary school. It's actually the least in terms of the issue of uh, exam cheating. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy for the people of Narok. What are the people True. of Narok doing right? Uh, of course, they, they are normally straightforward. You know, Maasai people are known to be very straightforward and trustworthy and very genuine. And that is why I'm the most genuine around here. So <laughs> what, what I'm saying, uh, again, uh, it is the culture of Kenyans. And I'm happy because we have Magoa at the CS of education. He will implement some of these issues mm -hmm. with surgical precision. I'm 100% sure that this one will be avoided. You know what he did well? He was in neck, just a mere chairman. Right. But now he's the CS responsible. So everything will be taken care of. Bosire, you are worried, but I'm sure all these people will face the law. Right. That guy is a non-nonsense man. Okay. Uh, uh, he was my dean, so I know him very well. <laughs> and he was also my vice chancellor. So he's a man for the job first. He is a man for that job. That and then again, is the, the Kenyan culture. You, you see exam cheating. You want to reap where you have not sold. Have you seen even Imran trying to campaign in parliament? Why, why was he campaigning inside parliament? 
We don't have votes in the parliament. It's also another election cheat cheat. Yes, because why was he in campaigning in parliament? But I realized let me bring it because you know what I mean. Why did you go down that to parliament? Let's go. Come on. Madam Elias. In parliament, by the way. Madam Elias, let me bring you in on this as well. Let me just say first, I want to thank the CS and his team because it's good to ensure we start now. You know, before, you would start when students are sitting now for the exams. Is when you're telling us, or oh, after, or oh, we've cancelled. I know there's a school where their results were cancelled up to today. And those kids are very bitter to date. And I, I just want to also ask the CS that uh, let's look to some of those uh, students. Because for four years in a school and then everything is cancelled and then you don't have mechanisms of how to deal with these students because I doubt whether a hundred percent all of them uh, would be on the same cheat. I think it's where parents are the ones. Most of these parents you'll find are parents teachers. Right. So you know the mechanisms of it. You, it's not an ordinary parent. It must be a parent who is within also the teachers uh, service commission that is able to do all this. So for me, I just want to say let us now ensure that we deal with the matter right. so that students also are not affected, all of them, and yet these are few parents right. who are putting now uh, every child who has worked so hard in a situation like this. So for you to also, the action needs to be taken uh, Yes, uh, as uh, immediately, mm -hmm. and, and uh, so that you safeguard, so that they go to exams like any other student. If, we have, if they are able even to pick and say, this school, yes, these were the parents or the teachers, then uh, let it go that way. Don't okay. uh, also do a blanket where we okay. affect many That's lives for nothing. Okay. I just uh, want to say that you looked, you said, what is the solution? The solution is in CBC. Yeah. We are trying oh, yeah. to do away with these this trains, these high stakes yeah. ranking oh, absolutely. and uh, competition. The thing is going back to students. It's something that will, I think CBC, ingenious as it is, it should be there so that we remove the premium on exams and ranking. Right. Yeah. Right. So mm. that, that is yeah, yeah. where we need yeah. to go. Okay. Okay. And of course, we'd like to see the action that will be taken as far as uh, the official, the ministry officials who are in that particular scheme is concerned. Let's move on because of time to another story we said we uh, touch on. Uh, investigating uh, lawmakers with dual nationality. Uh, this coming from an Omtata-led group who wants legislators to, to submit to the same standards they have prescribed for diplomats. This coming up after our ambassador to South Korea. Uh, that is decision ought to be rescinded uh, as it's in the house right now. Mwenda Mwenzi uh, didn't uh, uh, um, no, lose her U.S. Uh, citizenship and decided that uh, she wants to keep both. And that became quite an issue in the house. But as we deliberate that in the house, it seems like the same members in there also have uh, dual citizenship from this particular story. The ESCC saying on their radar as far as dual citizenship is concerned, Yusuf Hassan, Kamukunji, Safiya Sheikh, Masa Between Rep, uh, Aidan Haji, uh, Mandera South, Mohamed Dadir, Dadab, uh, Mohamed Garane, Lagdera, Charles Ngusia, Mwingi West, Jane Kihara, Naivasha. This is what uh, is here. You have an issue with how it's being reported, Honorable Sanko? Yes, yes. You know, you people of the uh, for this state, I'm worried. The <laughs> same members of parliament, the same members of parliament hold dual citizenship. That's what you have reported. Mm -hmm. And we have 400 members of parliament right and only 10 have dual citizenship and we are saying the same members of parliament probably even the one with dual citizenship one absent that day mm -hmm. but we said clearly that you cannot hold dual citizenship uh, i'm lucky i don't hold uh, two dual citizenship but you cannot hold two and represent the president of the republic of kenya in another country because you are your excellency you are actually the president of kenya in that particular country right. in, in any uh, unforeseen situation whereby uh, probably there is a diplomatic role between us and the united states who will you now represent if for, for instance the country that you are an ambassador there is a, a diplomatic role between that country and and another country that you hold and citizenship you, yes mm -hmm. and then they recall their citizens what will happen? We have you as your, our ambassador. U.S. have recalled you as uh, their citizen because they have a diplomatic role with that country. What, where will you stand? Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, U.S. will come and repatriate all their citizens, including you. And then what, what will happen with Kenya? 
Let me tell you, some of these positions are very sensitive. And for me, I stood and I will stand with my words that anybody who holds dual citizenship cannot represent the President of the Republic of Kenya, the Commander-in-Chief of all our armed forces. What about in the yes. National Assembly and the Senate? Can they have dual citizenship there, according to you? To me, that is another sin. Because you, if there was a sin, somebody else should not sin. Now we should now follow up and see those who have dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. If they have... They either uh, denounce the citizenship of other countries or they stop representing us. How do you represent us and you are also representing people of another country? Right. I, I believe, no, no, no. You cannot hold a uh, position of leadership if you have dual citizenship. Okay. Okay. You must be loyal to your country to represent your country. If you are not loyal, if you have dual loyalties, because that means dual right. loyalties. We don't know where you stand. Yes, Madam Alachi, you had alluded to this also last week in the sense that the people who are in the house, and we know uh, they've come from different uh, countries, have come here, have dual citizenship, and now, uh, funny, opportunity, it's already in the papers uh, today, uh, once you're back. So at least uh, the issue now, we can now deal with it. You know, you remember Sankor, right. I told him, when you people open a Pandora and they don't know, you're opening a, a, a door of many issues. They are out of 400, you know? No, no, whether it is one. You know, we, we, we refused one. Yes, we will refuse this time. Mm -hmm. And now we have ten. And I know if we do due diligence in many things, you'll find, I think, uh, we will agree that we did wrong. And so that we don't go back to that. Because you can imagine the work Moshmua Sangok did for him to be nominated. I can imagine. When I was in Senate, we would go, we would sumbua him at uh, the council, do this, do this for people. So when he's nominated, you feel indeed he deserves. You get? Right. Because you're not just being nominated because... But now when you just tell me you are walking from somewhere very far, you've not even been in your country. And you know, he's nominated not for Narok alone. Finish. You know, that's another thing. National office. Mm -hmm. for, for, it's a national office. But today... I mean, the work we did when we were nominated, I don't see many of them even doing. You've remained alone. The rest, they are just there. You, if you ask them, have you ever been even in Kakamega or in... Uh, they don't even know where it is. But you, you were nominated nationally to help mm. within that sphere. That's what the Constitution allowed you to be. And that is one thing I was saying. Let us relook and agree as Kenyans. Where well, we've done wrong, we come we say it should never happen again. Yes. I think right. that is what we've been saying ever mm. since the National Prayer Breakfast. We've been saying, let it not happen again. Let us open ourselves. It's like in the Bible, where the book of Ezra, where Ezra is saying, the sins of our country have grown from earth until heaven, until God cannot see what to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we are as Kenya, and we must reflect to ourselves and ask ourselves, did you want... A nomination where you even don't know why are you there you know even this person wonders why am i here you are getting mileage you're getting mileage to go where you know so you those should, are the key questions that yeah need to be it's unfair to the country it's unfair to a person who worked so tirelessly for any party in this country who is now at at home and wondering and this person you'll find is not even committed you go and look at what they have done in terms of records, in terms of their motions, yeah. they are not committed because they don't understand. Mr. Bosire, yes. uh, as we're seeing in this particular scenario, you can hear in the house they're not as effective as uh, they should be. But how do you even get into the house in the first place? Because there are all of these clearances that you should do yeah. uh, before you get into you certain know? offices. Did, was there a lapse in terms of uh, checking these particular instances of dual citizenship or not? Because now after the fact is when the ACC is following up on these particular officers. And first of all, I'm shocked that Honorable Elijah is saying that 10 out of 400 is not disturbing. Me? These are the leaders. No, it was not Elijah, Sankok, 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 sorry. Mm. See, it must <laughs> disturb you even if it's a finger of a person that is I disloyal. I think it's disturbing him. He's yes? just trying to... So the him. point is, <laughs> we have one thing. But this is a very serious. It's about our security, national security yeah. and the sanctity of this yeah, nation. absolutely. We make laws in parliament. And we are making laws by people who do not, first of all, believe in a nation they, mm -hmm. that they, serve, mm -hmm. they are supposed to serve. First, the processes of nomination. What are they? Last week we dwelt on what is it, what is the basis, the rationale for appointing people. Are we just giving our friends jobs? Imagine. Eh? What is it? Is it a reward system? 
and give you reward. Two, what are the investigative advetting agencies doing? Before that file is taken for nomination, somebody must be doing some background check, due diligence. Who are we dealing with? So someone is sleeping on the job S there as well. Sleeping and slumbering and <coughs> snoring. Two, there is a very disturbing thing that has, is coming back to our country. Maybe it's a matter that uh, I don't know what it is, but it's a matter that everybody is discussing with in hushed tones. The maritime dispute mm -hmm. yeah. in Somalia. It's a question of clash, conflict, and loyalty mm -hmm. by top state, state officials. officials. Yeah. And this is a matter, this is where it comes to. This is now a consequence, immediate, that some of our people who may have been involved at whatever level in this thing had conflicting loyalties to where their interests lay, mm -hmm. where their DNA was, where other things were their interests at that time. It's a matter that disturbs us. And finally, I just want to say this, eh? that this, the government needs to sit back. We stop doing politics and begin to look at a complete audit. Who among in our public service, state officers, right from the little DO, the chief, yes, to the national level, say this is where we should actually do that audit today and tell Both ourselves the who serves the, the interests of the Kenyan government, okay. the Kenyan okay. state. Yesterday, in Mandera, in the clan clashes, there was the question of. Clan loyalty, Clan loyalty, nationality, nationality loyalty. loyalty. So who, where, where do we lie? pledge our allegiance to? <coughs> so this are, it brings us to this. Another Honorable Lachi is talking about our sins as a country, especially built on false political issues, have gone beyond. I think they are almost touching the feet of God. Mm -hmm. eh? And we yeah. need to begin okay. to shake them and knock them down. Okay. Uh, Honorable Sanko, I'll I give you 30 seconds one as we point. move on. To the I have one point there. Okay. And, and actually... IABC should now be very strict. If you have dual citizenship, you should not represent people of Kenya. If you are married for uh, somebody from this country, out of, out of this country, you don't even trust this country. If you are children, have dual citizenship. If you have sent your children to go and study abroad, you don't even have trust in our system. So forget about our country. Let those who are in this country represent. In fact, even leaders who have children studying international, international schools, they are out of this country. You don't even believe in our system of education. How will you go and make laws in, the, in this country on, 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 on education if you don't even trust our own system of education? In fact, leaders should have the, all their children in public schools. Can they you should be treated in this country. If you, if you go out, out of this country, if you go to, out of this country to be treated out of this country, you don't yes. even have trust on yes. our, our country. So right. forget about this country because how can you make laws that concern universal health care when you don't even trust the system that we have in this country. Okay, I right. thank God because all my kids are in public institutions. In fact, some of them, they public institution, primary school, where we pay, pay even up to 5,000 Kenya shillings alone. And, and people are, are, don't have trust in our pa own public institution. They are now representing us. Who are you representing? Okay. As we're moving on to the next story, I'm hoping what you discussed will be brought to the floor. I will bring, bring a motion. To the floor. I'll bring a motion to the floor so that I As can we move, I, I want to, okay. to really thank Judge, uh, Judge Mumbi. Yes. I think she's among the very few who mm. is really trying mm -hmm. to bring back sanity also. Because yes. mm -hmm. she, she allowed secret search warrants in tackling graft. Right. Yes. And we really need to see how we can do She is a person with disability. I'm yes. proud of her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we definitely salute her. And as we get to the last story, uh, I didn't this say one, that, very, but very I very salute you, Judge Mumbi. Yeah, yeah, yes, very true. Let's look at this uh, last issue of the I day. To the how thousands plan. risk lives to cross Likoni Channel daily. Uh, Kenya Maritime Authority says Kenya ferry services vessels do not meet the required safety standards. Coxswains operating the ferries are said to be poorly trained and do not have the requisite standards of training, certification, and watchkeeping uh, certificates to operate at the vessels. Uh, MV Harambe, Nyayo, and Kilindini were deregistered from UK's Lloyd's Register after they were declared unseaworthy in 2010. Mm -hmm. These are the vessels we're using. Mm -hmm. And we see such tragedies and we act shocked. This is a just, these are accidents waiting to happen. You have a ferry with no barrier. What, what, what we were expecting to happen right there? Honorable Sankok, we're starting. Now the government is talking tough, withdrawing certificates, but this should have been done a decade ago, really, when you look at it. In fact, I, I'm shocked. Because in uh, democratic countries, the CS in charge of transport should have resigned. All those people working with the Kenya ferry services. The top management should have resigned. 
but to them human life is of no value to them mm -hmm. what value them what is of value to them is the salary that they are earning that is of value to them because how can you be the cs in charge of transport and i'm sure he actually uses that very at one point or the other and you have seen how it is mm -hmm. of course he have all the documentation that they were declared and and and, 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 uh, mm -hmm. uh, and see worthy in 2010 he have all those reports it is in <laughs> in his step in 2010 imagine and we are still there waiting for disaster people are crying imagine that vehicle was floating for almost more than five minutes yeah. people crying for help no emergency services even the ferry itself I, I, I think I think we, you know you know it's so funny because this country I think uh, we are totally uh, at Wogobi Mungu at Wogobi Thampi at Wogobi I don't know and we, we look at this headline and we're seeing this particular uh, story playing out. The family has waited for the government and, you know, government uh, agencies to try and retrieve the current body. They have been unable. Now the family is paying 100,000 shillings to a private entity to try and get their body. Just 100 shillings. 100,000 shillings. The government can Madam Elachi, here, here we are. Is it that we don't have adequately trained people? Do you wait for disasters to happen so that we can investigate how prepared we are for them? You know, Jeff, this was the most sad thing. And I was asking myself, leave even the divers at that time. We don't have a good swimmer. You know, everything runs in your mind and you're like, if somebody had just tied the big group that is on that ferry mm -hmm. and you move fast, you know, you can still come and pull it up before. Because it went very mm -hmm. slowly. 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 You could see. That was one. Then I was asking, we don't have the floaters, you know, where somebody can throw... And mm -hmm. uh, that you, you swim in and you try. I don't know. Uh, th those are things you do when... It was just a very a sad accident. Very sad accident. The worst was, so we don't have the locker. You know, because mm -hmm. I always think when they enter, There's this a thing that closes. Comes up the back. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in the front. Because mm -hmm. you can also do a break. Mm -hmm. You can also find another ferry coming or this ship. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you are in, Guilty. you know... Mm -hmm. So it just... I could not understand at all that fairy thing. And it is the most unfortunate. And now we will start again. And, it, and it's so unfortunate also for the president because you can imagine now at that level. You have officers, and now you want to be told again. It, it's, it, that's where he gets very angry to all of us because he's just wondering. Honestly, you want to tell me our ferry goes fl flat like this to water. So impact from under, if anything comes and gives you an impact from under the water, what happens to everyone in that field? That so they are gone, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, uh, for me, as uh, we say, honestly, yeah, this one, uh-uh. And then now, we need to come out and say, do we have divers or we don't have? Right. Number two, why is it that all ferries, you want to tell me the ferries just go, they don't have even two divers on that ferry. Right. Because even a child can just decide to be mischievous and think, yeah. oh, I, I can, can swim see. and right. just go. What happens? What yeah. happens? That's the end. So now I'm, I understand it is 60 feet down. Deep. Deep, yeah. Deep. So definitely we will hear, we are going to get people from outside. To, retrieve, to, to come and retrieve that. And there are people who are earning yeah. salaries. We have uh, the front page of the standard talking about uh, disaster exposes rot at uh, Likoni. And is this how we get to know how bad things are? When we lose lives, that's when we pay attention? First of all, like the world said, it was the most heart-wrenching thing. Watching, Watching life ebb. Yes. And yet, the people mm. were there. The, the basic things were not followed. You do not know whether we have officers. I'm shocked that still that man, I'm, forgive me for using that man, who is supposed to be the Kenya ferry somebody, is still in office, and trying to address the press. On what? Imagine. Mm -hmm. And then he is even confessing we do not have this. This man should be in jail. Eh? This man should be in jail. I'm not sure even whether the CS has spoken. Eh? I'm not sure. If he has spoken, he has spoken somewhere. At least I've not heard him. Mm. But this is a country that never takes responsibility. Nobody takes responsibility. Nobody ever learns that, that we bring decommissioned vessels. We pay. If you go to the Auditor General's report, they will tell you that there was a problem in the procurement of these things. <laughs> so from First the very one, beginning. From the very mission. beginning, 
over 8 billion shillings was somewhere lost in procuring dead vessels. And what we need to do, for me, it's not even an accident. This, what, what we are trying to do on the channels and very many other safety places is what we call genocide. Somebody just goes back and wants to kill Kenyans because you know you, those Kenyans will die. Mm -hmm. yeah, something, any slight jolt, they will die. I asked yesterday, for instance, in this country, when we talk about safety, if you walk into a building like this, and there is a manual that tells you as you go in, these are supposed to be bylaws governing safety. On the roads, what happens in the vehicles that we drive on the highways? I can, if the police, that's why police are always stopping you and taking money. They know people drive without insurance. They drive all manner of things. But we need to ask ourselves, why is this graft also killing us? Irresponsibility. Mm. Eh? Kenya Ferry Services, that MD should be at home. Right. The what CS. In jail. Yeah, in jail. He's a murderer. His home is actually jail. Mm. He should be in jail. Because, and to add that pain to that pain, the family is having to, to pay for the retrieval of the bodies. I asked myself that day when I saw that clip. We have the Kenyan Navy there. The Navy, they're there. Where is their response mechanism? Right. Everybody was asleep. The, the, maybe the commanders were somewhere having a, 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 the afternoon siesta because they, they are asleep. They're, what is happening to the so-called Coast Guard that we launched recently? What do yeah. they do? Mm -hmm. eh? And within the ferry services, don't they have those safety things like divers, the floaters and everything? Yeah. And the tugboats, what mm. do they do? Yeah, Nobody that. forgot to close this thing. And first of all, do you educate people? Now this comes to us. When mm. you go into the ferry, yeah. what do you do when you get there? I think there's an element that you switch off your engine. Mm -hmm. yeah? And you open, uh, you, you, you cannot uh, close the doors completely. Yes, you cannot. Yes. In fact, you're supposed to come out of the car. Yes, those are some of those the are basic the things that they should tell you. Like when you go into a plane, you're told now those this is what you Every do. Every single what time. Yeah, this, the, the ABCs uh -huh. of security, safety. And this is what we need to do. But I think for me, my heart goes out to the families yeah, of, yeah. The, uh, of the, the lady Indeed. and the child. Those yeah. innocent souls. I am not prone to cursing. But may the spirits of these innocent Kenyans awaken our way awaken of doing this. Our these people things. and tell them that we have a job to do, we have a responsibility to take mm -hmm. care of our, ourselves and safeguard. Okay. You are becoming a diplomat. Just say, may the spirit of those lost souls <laughs> follow the Ministry of Transport <laughs> Officers, the Kenya Forest Service MD. Just don't be okay. diplomat, don't be a <laughs> they, May they also sing in that sea. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have to wind up, wind it up and have a parting shot. We'll start with uh, Mr. Mosiri uh, as we wind up. What's uh, your parting shot this morning? Again, it's on a very tragic note. Eh? There's been a whole debate about the sanctity of our Kenya pipeline. On the page 17 of the People Daily today, there is still a debate about whether our pipeline is safe. Did it meet the safety standards? Mm -hmm. This is another accident waiting to happen. We need to go beyond debate and say we are going to do an inspection before another tragedy occurs out of the That's Kenya pipeline. From right. Sinai. From mm -hmm. Sinai and everything else. So, now. country, don't just suck milk in salary and allowances from your country. If you have a yeah. job to do, do the job. Okay. Honorable Sankoki, your parting shot. If we must politicize everything, let us not politicize the issue of churches. I've seen people claiming that some people are carrying bags of uh, sacks of uh, money, money in churches. <laughs> if your faith allows you to carry money in paperback or allows you to carry in uh, a wallet or in a kibet, uh, in a kibet let a kanisani at Jakarta. You know, some of us have a duty to go back and be, give to back to the churches right. because I'm a product of a church. I was educated by a church. I was an altar boy in the church. So if somebody claim that we are carrying sacks of money in donation to churches, kama imani yako imekurusu kupewa na pewa babak, wewe pelekea kanisa kwa sabu ijaka. And I'm the only one. I'll rebut on this and go on my final uh, whatever. The Bible says what your right hand does, not 
the left hand should never know. If you want to take a gift to church, take it, put it in the basket, let it be there for your blessings. Okay. It is not for pride, it is not to make the house of Lord a market the way Jesus in Jerusalem said, you cannot do this in the sanctuary of God. In, Kenyans, in your parting shot, let's like read it. our Bible mm -hmm. the way it is. Uh, in my parting shot, I want to thank the 114 members of parliament for ensuring, because women, you've seen how we fight. Yeah. It was so unfortunate that Tia would go through Kiare the way she did, yet we had someone else who was given a plan how to finish areas and he had not finished. But no member of parliament was able to come out and say, this one has areas you've given. Why are we fighting this other one? But then also to thank our IG and continue driving. Don't put on your uniform. Drive to all these people in all this country. Drive. You get them, take, suck them. Okay. In fact, don't remove them. I was so happy they the 47. Yeah, he was just driving alone. They stopped him. They took hunger and there and there. Okay. So he has to do that for us also so that we clean that place. Okay. Fantastic. Yes. And that's why we leave it as far as it's concerned. As always, every single morning here, a pleasure to have a uh, debate as far as the big stories of the day is concerned. Ken Busire, uh, M.E. People, David Santisana, Honorable okay. Sankok. Okay. Always a pleasure to have you here. Okay. Uh, speaker, uh, County <laughs> Assembly, Nairobi, uh, Madam Elachi, thank you so much for Go your time for as the well. The debate will continue. I can believe, you, believe you me, next uh, Wednesday we'll have that same debate happening right here. Have a great morning as far as the news of the is concerned. You're back so after the break. We get to make it lively. Yeah. <laughs>